Hey guys, welcome back to CakeTube. My name is Jen, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super easy watercolor monstera cake. This cake was super simple and does not require you to be a watercolor expert to complete. Let's get started. First, I want to show you some test pieces I did. I've never painted watercolor on a cake before, so I needed to try it out before committing. Side note, I will get into the materials I used for this later in the video. First I tried mixing gel colors with plain water, but this really didn't work. The water reacted weirdly with the sugar sheet and it just turned into this weird thick goop. And as you can see, it really didn't blend well at all. For my next test, I tried mixing the gel color with straight lemon juice and that blended really well, however it started to eat away at the sugar sheet. You can see here some of the cracks and bubbles that formed during the painting process. And for my final test, I decided to combine both the water and the lemon juice to see what that would produce, and it ended up working perfectly. The colors are vibrant and bold, and they blended really well together and created that perfect watercolor gradient. I did one final test piece just to make sure I could produce something that I would be happy with, and that is what you see here. I wanted the colors just to be a little bit more muted and a little bit more washed out to look more of a traditional watercolor versus the more bold that it was in the test piece. And again, as a side note, I will go deeper into the painting process later in the video. Now let's talk about materials. I obviously needed something that was edible, but I didn't want to use fondant or gum paste because I wouldn't have been able to get them as thin as I needed them. I came across these sugar sheets at the craft store and they were perfect. They're basically just sugar made into paper. I have no idea how they do this, but they ended up being exactly what I needed. Each sheet of paper is about the size of a standard piece of printer paper, and I ended up using two full sheets. I cut each sheet into equal size rectangles and was able to get six leaves out of each sugar sheet. For my leaf shape, I knew I wanted them all to be the exact same shape and size. I didn't want any variation. So the easiest way for me to do that was to find an image on Google that I liked and trace it onto my sugar sheets. I don't have any type of projector or printer set up at the moment, so the next best thing was to trace it directly from my iPad. This same technique could be done on your phone or by printing out an image and just holding the image and the sugar sheet up to a window like you used to do when you were a kid. The best way I found to do this was to make the image the size that I wanted on my iPad and then take a screenshot so the image would always snap back to that base size just in case it moved around during tracing, which it totally did. You'll see that in the video. I found this edible marker on Amazon and I'll link it below. This marker had a super fine tip that was perfect for this project because watercolor doesn't tend to have thick black lines, so I wanted them to just disappear into the painting and that's much easier with a thin tip. You don't have to be perfect with your tracing because even if every single line on every leaf is not exact, it's close enough and no one will be able to tell. I also ended up adding a stem to the bottom of my leaf because I liked the way it looked. I did half of my leaves facing this way, and then I used the edit feature in the iPad photo app and mirrored my image so the other half of my leaves would be facing the other way, just to kind of break up the monotony of all the leaves being the same shape and size. Next, it's time to watercolor. These are the gel colors I used. I mainly used blue and yellow to make custom shades of green and then added black when I wanted them to be darker. I didn't gesture to it on the box, but I did also end up adding a touch of brown to a couple colors. These are the colors I ended up using for my leaves. You can see here the different shades as I drag them up the side of the palette they are in. I tried to use one really light color and one really dark color and then a couple transition colors in between. These colors were mixed directly in the palette with straight lemon juice. To begin your watercolor, you need a base for the colors to lay down and spread out on. Off camera, I have a palette with clean water and I am simply painting the leaf with the water to lay my base down. 
The edible marker is rubbing off a little bit when it contacts the water, so that's why it has a bluish green tint as I'm painting it on. You can see that the initial painting looks pretty blotchy and not really blended, so this is where the magic happens. Take your plain water and go over the whole leaf once again and you'll see that it blends everything together to create those perfect gradient transitions. I'm going to show you two different techniques I use to paint these leaves. The first one I laid down a light base color all over the leaf and then dropped in my darker colors and adjusted from there. In the second example, you'll see that instead of laying down an overall light base, I just dropped the colors in in no specific pattern. I ended up liking this technique a lot better because the lighter colors were more vibrant and the darker colors were much darker. It was also a lot faster. I will show a comparison between the two techniques after the painting clips. Once I'd finished painting, I set each leaf out to thoroughly dry before I put them away. It's super important to place any sugar sheets you're not currently working on in an airtight container or bag. I placed mine in the bags that the sugar sheets came in because there was a Ziploc seal on each bag. Make sure not to place your sheets in the airtight container until your image is completely dry. Even though my images were completely dry, I placed objects in each bag to help keep the top of the bags off the images to prevent them from sticking. This is what happens when you don't put your sheets in an airtight container soon enough. They get super dry and start to crack and it doesn't take long for this to happen. Once all your images are dry, it's time to cut them out. As you can see, these are really easy to cut and did not require any sort of special handling or tools. This is pretty self-explanatory, but one thing I will say is that I opted not to cut the holes out of the middle of the leaves. They were so small and I didn't want to risk tearing or ruining the leaves, so I just left them white. Once all your leaves are cut out, be sure to store them back in your airtight container until you are ready to use them. Next, it's time to assemble and frost our cake. I chose to do buttercream, but you can of course use fondant if you'd prefer. I'm using my American buttercream recipe, which I will have a video on and will link that below. The cake is a strawberry funfetti cake that I doctored from a boxed mix. To doctor box mixes, I always either use Shauna McGreevy's WASC boxed mix recipe or Sugar Geek Show's box mix recipe. Both really are really good. And yes, I did cut my finger while I was leveling the cakes, which is why I have the fun protective cover on my middle finger for the rest of this video. Don't worry, it didn't happen anywhere near the cake. It was actually when I took the knife over to the sink to wash it. So let this be a reminder to you to always be extra careful with knives, even if you think you know what you're doing. Thank you. 
I personally am a very impatient person, so I rarely ever opt to cover a cake in fondant. For me, it takes far too much time and makes much more of a mess than it's worth. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not a patient person to begin with, and I just wanted to get to the decorating, so I didn't spend a ton of time on perfecting this cake and making it perfectly smooth. I still think it turned out fine, but you can definitely see that it's not 100% smooth, but that's okay. I love cakes like this because you can cover large imperfections with the leaves. I follow the same steps for every cake that I put together. First I level, then I spread an even amount of buttercream between each layer and stack all the layers up. Then I scrape off any excess buttercream and put the cake in the fridge until the buttercream fully hardens so the cake doesn't slide around when I'm trying to ice it. Once the buttercream is firmed up, I crumb coat the cake. A crumb coat is a very thin layer of icing that seals the crumbs in so they don't get into your final layer. Once the crumb coat is on, I put it back in the fridge to firm all the way up once again. Then I add the final layer of icing on and get it as smooth as I can with an acrylic scraper and my angled spatula. Once that is as smooth as I can get it, or as smooth as my impatience will allow me to make it, I take an angled spatula and dip it in very hot water for a few seconds. Once I feel the spatula is heated all the way through, I wipe off the excess water and work the spatula slowly around the cake. The heat from the spatula melts the buttercream and helps to make it ultra smooth. And finally, it's time to place our leaves on the cake. The sugar sheets have a clear plastic backing, so you'll have to remove that first. As I mentioned earlier in the video, even though these leaves have been in the bag for a week, they are still very flexible and not dried out at all. As a side note, that blob of buttercream on the cake board is just to mark where the front of my cake is. I determined where the front is by just judging what side I thought looked best. This angle was a little awkward to film, so I apologize if you can't see a lot of what I'm doing, but I found it a little bit challenging to get my leaves to fully stick to the cake. Looking back, I should have painted a little bit of water on the back of the leaves to help them stick, but I was just nervous at the time that I would go overboard and cause the coloring on the leaves to bleed into the buttercream. I would recommend water if you make the sugar sheet images. It also doesn't really help that because my cake was cold, my icing really firmed up, so it wasn't easy for the leaves to stick. I ended up just kind of forcing slash massaging the leaves into the cake until they stuck and it turned out fine. I place the leaves randomly over the cake, making sure to fill in the spaces evenly. The amount of leaves I had ended up being perfect for this size of cake. You can also take leaves and cut them up so they can fit along the bottom of the cake and fill in any awkward gaps. Once your leaves are all on, you're done. I really love the simplicity of this cake and it truly was so easy to do. I have very minimal watercoloring experience and I didn't find this challenging at all. The nice thing about watercolor is you really can't go wrong. Just trust your gut and have fun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to follow me and subscribe for more cake tutorials. Have a great day.